the, um, for the parents and students who are listening, my name is Mark Flaherty. I am the social thinking coordinator. And I am uh, a native of, well, let me check out for it. Right. I'm a native of this area. I grew up in the neighboring town of Lenox. I uh, graduated from the local high school and uh, then went off to college. I have degrees in, in uh, science, especially. I have degrees in geology, geophysics. I uh, later on got a degree in computer science. I have uh, master's degrees in, in uh, teaching and in theology. I uh, worked as an educational consultant in West Virginia for about 10 years. And I worked for CIT for 10 years, about 10 years. Now. In uh, various accounts. And you had an error when you came. I just went back to social thinking and building right there. Okay. And um, I'm Katie Black. I'm a social, one of the social mentors here. Uh, there's four of us. I also am part of the residential staff as well. And I teach some of the interpersonal um, skills classes. I'm originally from New York. I moved to Massachusetts about six months ago. Um, I have a master's in and I taught at various public schools in New York State up until I came to CIP. Roger or, 
but Rodney is going to get the promotion instead of you. He's going to take your ideas and sell them to the boss. And that's why I've seen that this is what happened to me my whole life until I decided I could be the leader, you know, myself, if I had, you know, the skills. So that's just my little introduction about social thinking. But we're going to let Mark first start and explain what he does on his job. And if it's not what he does on his job, students, tell me after this. Okay? <laughs> In all the different areas that that means. And so I'll just kind of get a kind of background moment and then some, explain some of the detailed activities <coughs> that we've done to accomplish those kinds of things. And so, kind of watching and growing your self esteem, right? Your ability to relate, relate with yourself, having self reliance, having self um, respect, and your self worth, your self concept, all those kinds of things to help you grow in those kinds of things. Also, to help you grow in your independence, your recognizing that it's your life. That it's time for you, to, for you to succeed in your life, as Michael said, it's up for you to kind of step up to the plate, to, to, to be a leader in your own respective life, to say, these are the decisions that are going to affect my life, and to plan your life, and to set the goals that you are going to achieve. And so personal responsibility for your own life. Your motivation makes a difference and will determine how far you want to go. So personal responsibility. Also, emotional regulation. So much of it, so much of life has anxiety, right? There's so much of life that we have this uncertain, and so be able to handle the anxieties that come along with life. And along with that, kind of regulating that, dealing with the frustrations, the annoyances, the, and, and all those, the both the highs and the lows that happen. So be able to handle that, so you're able to manage yourself in different situations and environments in which you find yourself. And then there's the the living skills of you know, some of the living skills that, that you just got to know. If you want to have a job, you got to know how to get there. You got to know how to take transportation. You got to know if you have a car, how to drive, how to follow a map or your GPS, how to get yourself to where you need to go. Then also, there's the kind of career kinds of things, the social dimensions of the career kinds of things that are so important. You know, your ability to listen to understand the instructions that the boss is telling you, your willingness to follow those kinds of instructions. Your ability to plan out the work that needs to be done. Your, your ability to problem solve. After all, the boss hires you with the idea that you'll be able to do the job independently when problems come up to be able to solve those kinds of things. And you'll be able to the ability to do the job in a way that it's done well. You know, that's a quality job. Um, you know, the, so you have to be the speed and accuracy and detail and multi, all of those kinds of things that have social dimensions. And then your relationships, developing friendships. You know, your your parents, your parents, you know, they're, they're <coughs> point in their lives when they no longer rely on their parents for the affection, attention, belonging, acceptance. And likewise yourself. Growing up, you know, we rely on our own parents for the attention, the affection, belonging. But when you become adults, where does that come from? It becomes from your ability then to develop friendships. And so focusing and encouraging you and developing the friendships that, and the skills for developing the friendships that are important for life. So all of this kind of the social emotional growth, as you so frequently say, you know, it's like it precedes so much else. For that we do everything. We have gone, we have we do lots of activities outside the classroom. I am a big believer in teamwork kinds of things. And so the, uh, we put on a haunted house. The students did a phenomenal job working on a haunted house this past fall. They worked in teams, each group, each class, having a responsibility for working together, designing, planning, building, and then performing in them. We put on a, a talent show and for that a number of the students had to go out to the community, the business leaders, and to speak with those leaders, would they be willing to give a donation that would go to a support of the Senate here as well as the autism uh, autism group, an autism support group, community resources project. And for that, they practiced a, a, a script, they practiced with each other, they practiced with me, they practiced with another staff member, and they went out and did it. And some were polished, some were more polished than others, and yet all displayed courage in being willing to do that. Personal presentation, the impression that, that you make, the communication, the, the not knowing what to say, but in the, in, the, in the spur of the moment coming up with something to say. 
yeah, and, and the kind of the confidence that comes with small successes, and successful accomplishment of, of those kinds of things. We do lots of things. We've gone and built campfires. We've, we've, um, we've had socials in the apartments. Uh, last summer, uh, Jackie remembers uh, doing, we, we were carving strawberries uh, and having little ice cream socials. We had to carve them. And then having a, a, another activity, we had at Sabrina's place where we had Jenga, she had to host the, the thing, kind of doing the, the kind of balance kind of game. We've done gaming in the apartments where uh, people like uh, Katie and Joe Warnock and, and a few others, you know, they, and Victor, hosted games where they were responsible for hosting it, not just playing a game, but then hosting it, building teamwork, showing others, giving support, since they were the experts in the game, showing us how to play it. And so putting them in the role, using an interest that they have, putting in the role of playing. So we do, we do lots of different kinds of activities. I try to use, um, so they can go on and ask you a question. Yeah. So what specifically do you do? <laughs> 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 the requirements and things, how do you work it? I mean, you have, you have group and you have small group or individual sessions, or how do you run? I have classes. So, okay. we, so I, I have mostly classes. Uh, and in those classes, we need pride to special work on projects. Also, I have one-on-one -on -one session uh, with some students, a few students. And uh, then in addition to that, there's the uh, uh, overseas support and social measures. And okay. And another question would be, yeah. so each student, when they come in, I'm going to give you some, and I'm going to go from there. Each student, when they come in, we do an assessment, basically, and you students know, each one of you knows, the, your three main areas in social thinking that you probably need to work on the most, whether it's conversation skills or, or whatever you know, whatever they are. So after you identify those with them, how do you like sort of write prescriptions for things that they might try in the community so that they can sort of test out their abilities? And, and then what is it? That's one question. And then what are the curriculum areas that you sort of talk about as far as social thinking in classes? The, as far as prescription goes, it is tailoring especially happens to the social network. And so that when you write down some of the goals that you, you stated, when you came in here, for example, I'd like to develop friendships or I want to improve my social skills, or it might be a <coughs> friend factor, some things like that. Using that and also some other goals that, that come along in, in discussions with you, in discussions with your parents, in discussions with the career coordinator, there's a few goals that are, are identified. And then with the with the social mentors, we come up with ideas. For example, it might be eye contact, it might be maintaining conversation, it might be the reciprocal <coughs> conversation and working on how to have a reciprocal conversation. It might be um, interrupting. Uh, and so one student um, had a survey that they did and uh, went to a local there was a bookstore here at the time. They went into the bookstore and as part of the thing they had to they asked the survey, did a survey to some of the people there. So we try to take so we take the goals that are mentioned and through the through social mentoring especially tailor it to work on those kinds of goals. Second second part of it was what kind of areas do I cover in my uh, for the social thinking. So the, the areas of I first want to talk about careers because that's a special focus for us. The, the employment rate amongst those on the autism spectrum is low, very low. Um, it's an area that's critical for being able to live and being able to be independent, so we want to encourage and support that. And so the areas that I focus on there, and the areas that employers have identified as well as key areas to work on, include um, special teamwork kinds of things. When there's, there's kind of a person relationship to the task, and that involves things such as planning up your work, uh, instruction following, problem solving, and quality of work. So I focus on those kinds of things. My, my students have seen the sheets of the report. OK, let's, let's take a look and see what you're doing in this area. And then also on the, on the uh, social side, of dealing with conversation kinds of things, and uh, starting conversation, maintaining, not interrupting, that kind of thing, as well as manners. So career becomes very important, and uh, we've done that through, through interviews, through the impressions that they, you know, that they, during the talent show, 
And uh, I use that to de that form those qualities as a debriefing tool when I'm working with my students in their various projects. Other than career, in addition to career, another hugely important area is friends. And one of the things that I have the, the, social, the interpersonal class do is something called 100 by 100, where those who are beginning had to start 100 conversations in 100 days with 100 different people. And uh, so they, so in doing that, practicing conversation, using different techniques to start a conversation, using four basic techniques to start. So a challenge, gosh, you know, you come in, how many people do I actually know? Of those students who are new here, how many kind of remember that form, doing 100 by 100 form, Sam? Right, okay, you know, Jason, you know, maybe did the interpersonal skills class. This, this term, kind of taking that on, doing the next step, okay, having a conversation. And then, so working on, so friendship building is another important area that, that we focus on. Okay, so I'm going to let you take a rest. <laughs> and so we're going to ask. Uh, Katie, to explain what you, just to explain what you're doing with students and you know. Okay. Um, myself, along with the three other social mentors, have specific students they see um, on a weekly basis. Some students you see once a week, some students twice a week, depends. Um, usually in the beginning of social mentoring, you're just really getting to know the students, figuring out what are their interests, what do they like to do, um, building that relationship with them. <laughs> so they trust you and they know that you know what they say will stay with you. Um, then, like Mark said, the goals that they have um, that they've identified they want to work on for the semester, we figure out um, what goals they want to focus on, and then we come up with the activities that they want to do that are going to help them achieve their goals. So then, usually that's when we go out into the community, we practice um, working on their different goals, whether it's through modeling, um, role playing. Um, a lot of discussion, um, a lot of practicing out in the community, so getting them out in the social setting and being able to um, practice the skills, practice the goals that they need, that they want to achieve, um, and just practicing as much as they can, getting out into the community. So I would say that's pretty much it. That's cool. And an important point there is, while they're doing their special interests, so if they're interested in computers, they might be practicing uh, conversation skills at a computer store, so that they're being able to enjoy what they enjoy and learn the skills that you want to learn at the same time. Isn't that the best way to do it? Like if I'm gardening, I can learn social skills from gardening. Hopefully. Like, like there's an example, um, one of the students really likes to bake. They like to cook, like to bake. One of the goals they want to work on is completing a task or um, following instructions. So we came up with, we found a recipe, um, we made a list of the ingredients that we would need at the store. We first went to their apartment to make sure they had some of the ingredients that we didn't have to buy. Um, we went grocery shopping for those ingredients, and then the following session, we actually we went to the apartment and we actually made um, the cookies. So it was kind of a process that was something that they were interested in, and they were kind of they were able to follow the instructions. They were completing the task, so working towards their goal. Okay. So I would like to share a story with you about probably a student that, that um, had this, this social thinking story. So we had this student who came to one of the centers and went to the college for the assessment. You know, the assessment test to do at the college. And when he got to the college, um, in, there was a bunch of students in there and other people from the community. And the person who's worked there has worked there for years. And he saw a question on the test, and he brought it up to the person, the proctor, and said, this question's wrong. It's not correct. It shouldn't be out on the test. You know? And she went, um, she said, well, you know, just sit down and finish the test, and we'll just skip it or whatever. You know? And so he said, no, this question's wrong. It's wrong on the test. Yet. It's not the correct question. She said, well, just sit down. And so he finally sat down, but he pulled out his cell phone and he got in with his mom. And he said, Mom, the question is wrong on the test. And it's a short thing to test. And the proctor came over and said, You've got to put the cell phone away. You have to, you know, you know, finish the test. Just ignore that. Put it down. So um, he said, Well, the question is wrong. You know what I mean? And so he kept saying it. And she finally had to call the campus security guard and have him come in. And, Student refused to leave the test. Said, "No, this question's wrong. You know, we didn't really the test. Called the state police. 
the policeman comes, leads the test, finally, well actually the academic coordinator is out in the hallway and we call the academic coordinator and wouldn't we wouldn't we be there? And um, say so police come, take this up, he's walking out of the building with the academic coordinator going, I don't know what the problem is, what, what are they all upset about? You know? And so this is a true question, a true uh, thing, but the staff at that particular center wanted that student gone. They wanted him out of the program. And I said, no. I was pretty vociferous about it. I said, no, we need to double up the social thinking classes and appointments and take them out of this first semester, out of this college, so he can get ready and understand what he, what he needs to do. And you know that kid uh, graduated with honors from college and then went on to a four-year college and ended up getting an award for social thinking at the center that they were at. And so I think some of us, and you know, psychiatrists and social workers and psychologists a lot of time, some of our behavior, and I have the same behavior that you guys might have had some of this behavior before you came here. It looks pretty, cr pretty crazy when an adult man, before I was diagnosed, would have a meltdown at Christmas and be like a little child and not be able to, because of the sensory integration stuff and not knowing how to handle things. And so I didn't know that either until, I didn't know any of what we're teaching you until the last 10 years. I mean, a lot of us, I didn't have to be five pretty much make it look good. But I certainly didn't know the intricacies of social thinking. So you'll, you'll probably, some of you will, like me, will probably be learning the rest of your life. And I still have, you know that comment I made about Mark, about his hair? He's <laughs> 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 a good guy and I know he can take it. And that could really embarrass someone. It was probably very inappropriate when you think about it. You know what I mean? So I'm still capable of doing things like that. Luckily, I'm apologizing to him probably. I'm sorry. <laughs> I accept your apology. Yeah, I know how to do that now. But that's a new thing in the last five or seven years for me to realize it and then apologize and say it to someone. So it's a lot, you know, these things are worth doing because the more that you get these skills down, what's going to happen? Your world, your life goes like this. It's very closed minded right now and very directed because if you're afraid to make any changes, if you're afraid to integrate any feedback from the staff and try anything new in your life, food, you know, movies, religion, anything, if you're afraid to look at anything because you're threatened by it, then you're not going to get very far because you might have a Muslim working with you at work or you might have a, you know, you don't know. So you have to be able to deal with all kinds of people, all kinds of situations. So that's why we're sort of here tonight to talk about it a little bit. But we're going to go on to my next question, which is going to be, oh, tell us a before and after story of a student that, you don't name names, <laughs> you can disguise the student, of someone who started out with a social thinking difficulty and then how they overcame it and what happened later. I'm sorry, sure. There was a, so there was a girl here with a girl who was here several years ago and was uh, and very shy. Very kind, nice girl, but very shy. Uh, had difficulty starting conversations, maintaining conversations, interrupting, finishing conversations. She had, a lot of, she had a lot of difficulties. And her aim was to, to have a job and to have friends. And through all of what we do here, all of the departments <coughs> working together, all of her interactions with the, with the staff and the academic department and the wellness department and the, and, the, and the career department, she was able to get several internships and, and improve there in the social thinking. She was able to, and in the social management, she was able to work on some of the conversation skills, the starting conversations with others, having ideas of what you might say in a conversation in order to ask and you know, get any sense of what the, whether the other person is interested in your conversation, so engaging in conversation, uh, interrupting appropriately. She was able to improve in her, her conversations. She was able to improve then in the relationships that she had in her, in her apartment from being a little, uh, difficult to be more agreeable, more workable, more flexible uh, in relating to the apartment and to her apartment mates. 
and the and so she, she practiced those kinds of skills, the developing conversation, the, the uh, developing friends, doing things with friends, asking friends to do activities together or inviting friends over to her place. So she was able to work on those kinds of things. And now, through that process, she has gone on to have a, a full-time job with several different internships and several different jobs moving to her point where she has a full-time job where she's been recognized by her boss as doing an OP job. She, she works in, you know, at, at a resort doing laundry kinds of things, but she's content in doing it and she she makes a livable wage and she gets her insurance and she's proud of what she does. And uh, she has an apartment of her own. She has a car of her own. She invites people over to her apartment from time to time and does a few things with others from time to time. She wanted it. She worked for it. She did some work on her part. So she was willing to work for it and it paid off. Okay, you have a story? Yeah, mine might be a little more short term just because I haven't been at CUP for as long as Mark has. But um, one of the students in the beginning of last semester, they had a goal that they wanted to work on planning what to say and making choices. So one of the students would get nervous or kind of unsure of himself if he had to go to a local business and hadn't planned out what he wanted to say yet kind of freeze up and get really nervous and, um, you know, it was difficult for him in a new social situation. So throughout the semester, we worked on coming up with certain things that he would say in a social setting. And he decided he wanted to work on going, being able to go to a restaurant and order food and being able to make eye contact with the waiter or waitress, knowing what to say when you get up to a counter and, um, you know, the proper greeting, how you order food. How, how do you pay, how do you give a tip. Um, so throughout the semester, we really worked on that, going down to different um, restaurants and first watching people order food, kind of seeing what they do, um, what types of behaviors do they have, what do they say to the cashier or the waiter or waitress. Um, and then we did some role play a little bit, you know, of kind of planned out what we were going to say before we went down there. And then the student was able to, over the semester, was able to start going and with planning what to say, being able to order on his own and having more confidence and knowing that he would be okay and he would know what he was gonna say. And eventually, I think the long-term goal is not having to plan what to say, being comfortable enough and being confident and being um, secure that he's gonna be able to kind of on the spot make a decision that was something that was tough, so it's getting, it's getting better, but it's more of a short term. I'm picking cookies, meals, pregnancy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, And she growing throughout the semester, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's great. Oh, that's a good story, but it does show that all those little behaviors are what build the big ones, right? All those little skills, like just being able, I mean, Kyle, I know you're a good guy, but you don't mind spotlight on that's for sure. So Kyle, the way Kyle has changed in one year of being the intern in the theater, his skills in greeting the public and, and then being part of the improv theater yourself and getting up on the stage with the other actors, that was pretty cool. But I think, and you know, a lot of you have seen your skills change. Uh, and I'm not even around center that much, you know? but I've seen it change because I only get a little glimpse of you here or there. And that's, that's really, it's really nice to see that. My story about social mentoring is going to be the student I'll call him Alex from Seattle, Washington, who was at our Berkeley Center. Alex was a big kid, ponytail, red hair, and like a lumberjack, and sort of fearsome looking, scary, but really, like, he was a big, gentle giant, really nice kid, very nonverbal, we didn't talk to anyone hardly at all, one word, yes, no, smart as Dickens, had like, you know, a, I think he had like a hundred and 20 or something great point average in his statistics class at Berkeley City College because he was doing all the extra work and getting it corrected. And so he met his social mentor. The first time she had been trained, I was out there, was helping with the training. And she was about five foot, whatever, and she was about six, eight. And she was like a master's uh, student from UC Berkeley. And um, so they met, and he liked girls, so he had a little trouble talking a little bit more to girls. So he had a little conversation with her, and they, they decided what they were going to do. They 
a two-hour session. So his idea was to Google a map to UC Berkeley, which is the big school on the hill, and he wanted to go to the staff department there. But they started talking about his main social thinking difficulty, which was conversation skills, reciprocal conversation skills, being able to have a whole conversation with people. How do you start it? How do you keep it going? And how do you end it appropriately not just walk away from someone, you know, quietly or something? So they, they just she sort of integrated it into their conversation in a very normal way, just by talking about her own experience and everything. And they got up to the college, and he went up to the clerk at the office there and started to have a conversation with her about, you know, or explain why I was there. They want to find out about information about the program, but then also saying, you know, did you get your degree at Berkeley? Did you, you know, did you grow up here? And, and then having a little, you know, three or four times back and forth conversation. In other words, not just yes or no, but oh yes, I came from you know Wisconsin or something, and then oh yeah, well, my aunt was in Wisconsin, and then oh well, Madison, oh yeah, Madison. See what I'm saying? So it went back and forth, not just one little question. And so we did maybe about four minute little conversation, maybe even two minutes. But that was probably the first conversation he had the whole year with anyone. I went that long. And then, of course, he's, when he's talking about his special interests, it's easy to talk about staff for him because he's so interested in it, right? It's the opposite of me now. I'd be like asleep in five seconds if you start talking about staff. Uh, but he started talking about staff and talked for like an hour about staff with a woman and signs up on their website or their dirty news or whatever and signs up to go on weekend activities. Now, I don't know what kind of weekend activities staff people do. I know that's not the place I want to be ever. <laughs> I mean, I'll go to the dog pound and, you know, pick up the poopy rather than, <laughs> than do that. It would be more fun. So uh, this time of night, my sensory issues are gone, so I'm not responsible for my verbals past this point. <laughs> and uh, if you guys relate to that at all? Yeah. So anyway, that was his story, and it kicked it very well. And the academics were not the problem, and most of you, Almost all of you are extremely intelligent. That's not the problem. We tell your parents, we know that's not the problem. The problem is how you find the thing that makes you feel happy doing for work. And how you get the social skills so that you don't do, you know, I'm sort of exhibiting some of the appropriate social skills for each other. But how do you, uh, you know, keep that, you self-modulate so that you can know when to ask questions on the job. So I have another little story about that which is a student who was placed in an you know, internship in a pharmacy, wanted to work at the cashier, but had to work their way to the cashier. So they were stopping. So here's the social thinking problem. They say, here, stock these boxes on these shelves, right? So the boss, what does the boss do? Does the boss stand there and watch you? No, the boss goes and does what they're doing at the cash register or whatever. So finish stacking stuff on the shelves. What do you do? Well, the student didn't know what to do, so he just didn't do anything. And so that's a social thinking problem because he needs to either do one of three or four things. He needs to either go to the to the you know boss and say, What do you want me to do now? Or even better, what this happened with the career the internship coordinator did was had him ask the boss for a list of things he could do when he would run out of things to do. So that he gave the, task, the boss gave him a couple of tasks in the store, then he could just, when he finished it, he would always know he can sweep the aisles or he could go to these three things that you can always do if you don't have downtime. Because what would happen otherwise, the boss couldn't supervise his kid all the time. So what he would do is he'd say, well, I can't use him because he just doesn't get anything done. And, and the kid's very motivated, but he didn't know what to do and didn't know how to ask the question or ask for a list of things. You see, that that could prevent you from being successful on a job, that alone, right? And so you can see how the social thinking, that's how it connects with that one. And I'll have to ask another question Mark. So Mark, um, I'm not sure I'm going over here. Uh, tell us another story that you might have of a student in a different area and how you integrate their social, their special interest in the description, if you want to call it that. The, 
like, how about telling us about that game that you did? And I couldn't figure it out. They had all these things on the stairway, and they were going all over the community. What were they doing? <laughs> the, uh, what's the company I could be talking about? The, uh, Adam. Adam, can tell us Adam? What? This is your acting movie. <laughs> What Chairman Humphrey did last year involved going throughout CIP's building, looking for hints that you could use to find out where you would get a certain prize. And you had to talk to staff about it, and if you got, went to the right staff, they gave you a little hint, and that was a number, whether three, two, three or two, zero, one, two, eight, nine, it varied. And then you have to go to do another hint. And if you got that hint right, they would give you another number. And then you had to go to the third person to get another number. And those numbers might not make sense, but if you organize them, you got a certain room number over at the main building. And when you went to that room number, you were given a piece of candy. However, along the stairs going up the, <coughs> the main building from the sidewalk were little numbers, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, binary. I never figured it out, but <laughs> because I'm not computer illiterate, but there was a student here last year who now lives in Pittsfield with one of my former roommates who was able to figure it out. And if you were able to figure that out, you got an extra piece of candy. So, <laughs> And Mark organized that entire thing, and all the social mentors helped with that, and it was a lot of fun. The uh, purpose was, the purpose was, yeah. Um, several. One was fun. Secondly, the, the idea of starting conversations in different ways, using de different techniques, whether it's by asking a question, making a comment. So the students had to go to different places to get the clues. They had to go to the library. They had to come to the Spectrum Theater to tie it. They had to go downstairs in the gallery where, uh, where we had our reception. And then they had to go to uh, the reception and stuff at CIP. And each place, they had something to think. They had a question or comment. Some, they started a conversation. And through that conversation and completing that, they got the next clue. And these clues summed up to be uh, like Kyle said, where the, the room number, where the final piece of, uh, where the treasure was. Instruction following, um, starting conversations, um, and, and, uh, and kind of fun. Really kind of putting all those things together uh, as, as, a way, as a teaching tool. And to kind of do as much as they could on their own, and they, and they did. And during the class period, and then afterwards, they, they went out and did that. It reminds me of a, a, a higher staff in Berkeley to be an IT person. A real smart guy in the community. And when I was talking to him one time, I said, well, I think you might have a little bit of Asperger's yourself. And he said, I said, tell me a little bit about yourself. And so, so I said, I said, tell me about your childhood. He said, what did you do for fun? So one of the things he started telling me about was that he still had a notebook that he kept as an adult. He was like 30 years old, 35 years old. Still had his notebook from when he was a kid, and what he would do is take a tennis ball and drop it off the top of the stairs of his house and see how many times it would bounce on another stair before it got to the bottom. And then he would keep track of it of the, so he could figure it out the average number of times it would hit the stairs and all that stuff. And he still had that. I said, okay, you got Asperger's. <laughs> I said, anyone would do that. I mean, it's all right to do it, but then keep it when you're 35. And you know, I think that's, Tracking data like that and just keeping track of it and doing it all day long, you know. But what would be what would be a good job for someone like that? Accountant. Yeah, accountant or working in a laboratory where you can focus on you know data, anything like that, a law library, anything. Okay. I guess going back to the special interest that this is in kind of broad sense. There's uh, uh, so first of all I want to acknowledge all the students here for your broad range. You know, all of you have progressed, and, and really there's a number of things that you can, you can talk about and just kind of interact with others about. And so I really praise you for that. And you're willing to have conversations on things other than your special interests. 
And while there are some interests that you have, you know, that, and I, that, that you have that are huge, then, for example, the Hunting House, for example, the talent show, for, for example, this, um, what we're having next week, we're having a, a cabin fever event. For example, I had to do the interviews last year when you, remember when we had to do the interviews and we did the, we used the video taking for the interviews and you had to go to, you had to see myself and go to Colin and then we, then you had to go out to a, a business. We had some business leaders who came in, you had to do a mock interview with business leaders. And so trying to use the kind of built-in interests of the students at their you know, stage in life. I guess another one is uh, with travel. You know, some of the students have been walking to the of Boston and it's a little confusing to read the schedules and, and to follow it. So with some of the students, uh, whether it's Sean or whether it's Ethan, I'm kind of encouraging, helping, going and take them to take local transportation so they can learn the bus system so they can kind of more independent, get out there to the places they want to go to. Okay, do you have another story you want to share? Um, well, some of you, the students, know that I'm not the most tech-savvy person, and my phone's probably from the year 2005, but <laughs> um, a lot of the students, well, some of the students are very, they know a lot about technology, they're very knowledgeable about computers, about phones. Um, one of the students came up to me, and, well, we have an early session all the time, and he was constantly, you know, showing up late, or showing up to classes late and wasn't really sure how to fix it. So um, he decided one of the goals for this semester was he wanted to be on time to all of his classes, all of his appointments. So one of the thing, goals was problem solving, figuring out how is he going to be able to get to these early 8 o'clock classes or 9 o'clock classes on time um, and not be late for them or not show up at all. So he came up with a way that he put it in his phone and he came up with um, a checklist, different strategies that he can do, whether it be at night and in the morning, um, about five or six different things that he can do. And we came up together, most of them were his ideas, about how he could manage his time at night and in the morning and be successful and show up to, to class on time. One of the things was using his phone, um, having that in his phone. So a lot of you guys have your schedules in your phone or you're able to access a lot of the information. So he had the, the um, strategies in his phone. He would set his alarm, and one of the things was he put his phone on the other side of his room. And he would set like three or four alarms on his phone. So after the fourth one, probably being very annoying, he would have to get up and turn his alarm off on his phone. Um, so that was just, and then actually it's been kind of a, a quick progression because that was probably a couple weeks ago when the semester started. and. Every day, he'll come up to me and say, oh, I needed to, to class on time. I got there. I wasn't late, or I was only five minutes late. So something that he's been working on, but it's an interest to him because he likes technology and likes using his phone. So, um, all of this has to relate to careers because ultimately, um, that's what it's all about. Because you do have to have a means of making it for yourself. And, uh, like you said, the social is the glue that holds everything together, whether it's your relationship with your girlfriend or boyfriend or spouse or a woman at the bank, you know, behind the counter. So what we've learned is that the more you're willing to you ask for help and talk to people and socialize, the better that you do. So, for example, a um, short, short story. And my brother moved to Las Vegas. I had been operating three group homes there, and I hired him to come work with me. And I had lived there five years before he came. And I went to the same bank all the time, only one teller. It was before computers, so you just cashed your check and you got money or used the checks for everything. And you made your deposit of your paycheck. So I went after two weeks. He was there. Yes go to the bank and I told him where to go to the bank and then I went there like a week later after he went to the bank, same bank. And I go up to the teller, I've been going to sell for five years and I give her my check and she looks at me and says, you're, oh, you're Jim's brother and starts to tell me all about my family and everything about me. <laughs> and I thought, Jim has a big mouth. <laughs> Has a big mouth, and he's 
for the appropriate public. And, um, <laughs> but I thought about it for like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I had other discrepancies like that. And, and seriously, then when I was on this, this uh, van to go get my rental car in Indianapolis, I was the only one on the van with this young driver in his 20s. And I said to myself, well, maybe you could just talk to him. But then I said, well, what is he going to know that I'm interested in? You know, my SB, like, better than thou. I have a doctor and master's degree and everything else I'm doing. What am I going to talk to him about? That's what I was thinking. Then I said, well, that's really pompous. Why don't you just say something like, what would you be interested in? So I thought, well, the Colts. The Indianapolis Colts were really good that year. So I said, well, hey, what about the Colts? And it felt like I was throwing up when I was saying it. <laughs> but I said it to him anyway. And it's like saying, I love you the first time. It's hard. <laughs> hard for guys to do anyway. When we can say it But uh, so I uh, said that to him. And he starts going off about the Colts. And I'm going, oh my God, now I've listened to about the Colts. I hate the Colts. But I hate the Patriots, you know. But so when I listened to it for a while, I switched the discussion to bicycles and art, you know, art galleries. And he told me all the way to Bicycle Pass Summer in Indianapolis where the art galleries were and everything. When I got off the bus, I had to get my car. So I had a 10 minute ride. I felt like I had more self esteem than when I got on the bus. I said, that's a strange feeling. What is that? And you know what it was? It was like me actually having the courage to speak up and try to have a conversation with someone. I learned a lot of good things that I, you know, about the art. There's this beautiful museum we go to. And, and guess what? That was directly related back to the bank in Las Vegas 20 years before that. Because I realized that it wasn't just my brother being a big mouth. I just liked to have a lot of friends. And he made friends. He knew everyone's name, everywhere he went. So when he walked in the bank the next week, I'm sure he said, Hi, guys, how are you doing this week? That's like speaking Chinese to me. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know how to do that. And I still have a hard time. I can walk through one of my centers. I'll walk right past the staff. And then I have to go back to Michael. Just walk past Katie and Mark. Go back and talk to them for a minute. It's more important that you talk to them than do your work on your computer. So that's really what it's all about, guys. And we're going to take some of the last comments from either one of you that you want to add in. And then we'll have questions and answers from anyone. I guess that. Social skills, social thinking is something that we do throughout our life. It's something that we all do. It's something that we all can grow in. Yeah. I've learned a lot over here, and I feel myself just a beginner at all of the things we learn. All of us find ourselves in situations where we say, you know, I should have said this, or I should have said that. I'm thinking about things afterwards. All of us do that. It's something that all of us are growing in. And I praise you for your courage students or to all of you in the business as well. I praise you for the courage that you have in making efforts to connect with others. There is a payoff. It does make a difference. You are able to make connections. You are able to make friendships. You are able to socialize. All those benefits are there. And it's up to you and I to make those efforts. Um, yeah, I mean, Mark summed it up pretty good, but um, one of the other things that we're working on in the interpersonal skills class, which most of you guys have, is going out in the community and taking it that one step further from last semester and getting out there and starting a conversation with someone else that's not from CIP. So whether it's at um, the community college, whether it's at your internship, whether somebody in the community that you might see and have a conversation with, but you need to know their name and where the location was. So just getting yourself out there and not being afraid to just say hi or have a conversation with somebody because there's nothing bad that can come of it. Just getting yourself out there, getting more self-confidence and knowing that you are able to, to do those things. So. Great. And I'll just have less words since I get to do that. And uh, so I want to encourage you to be self-change agents, which means you take this stuff and then you start applying it. Don't just sit to the what we do here, but go out and try it. And don't be embarrassed or afraid. You're going to make mistakes, and that's part of the process. And, and, and have a sense of workability and flexibility in everything you're doing. 
You know, there's a lot of good things that happen because I listen to my staff now. And they say, well, why don't you do it this way? And then the three or four of them say that, and I listen to them, what am I doing? What am I using? Donkey rule. Donkey rule. Donkey rule, which means if five people say it's a donkey, I still think it's a horse, and don't be a jackass. Do what they say. <laughs> because they're probably right, and so especially for people you respect, right? And so the last thing is we're trying to fish, teach you to fish rather than give you fish. Your parents have given you lots of fish. They've tried to teach you to fish. They can only do so much fishing with you. Now we're at the the big time here. We're going ocean fishing here. And you need to reel, how to reel them in for yourself. You know? So they take you as far as they can take you. You've got to be able to, within the, the short time you're here, it's a short time, a year, or two, three, whatever, you have got to be able to step out of here and ask questions, find out solutions for yourself, have people that you can trust, that you can talk to, take care of your money, take care of, you know, understand what you need to do on your job, and form a relationship with other people. You've got to be able to do those things. You're not going to be perfect when you leave here, but the point is you've got to be able to do it. And if you do those things, you'll be successful in whatever you decide to do, whether it's, you know, being um, in forestry or being, a, you know, at MIT. It doesn't really matter. The thing your parents just want you to be happy, productive, and be able to take care of yourself and have a social life. You know, the worst thing for your parents, I can guarantee this is the worst thing is to see you five or 10 years from now in an apartment by yourself, unwilling to talk to people, and then just imploding around your special interest and being on SSI and, and not being able to do anything for yourself. That is the worst case scenario, and all of you are capable of much, much more than that. So don't hide out, be courageous, and we'll, and we'll have the rest of the year to, to work on that. And, Thanks for coming, everyone, and we'll have more questions after we talk to us.